Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good afternoon again. Uh, I welcome you all for my third or uh, final session of bone tissue engineering. So, uh, I'll just explain in a diagrammatic representation. Uh, the, the, say this is the producer cell. This produces signaling molecules. These are signaling molecules, which are nothing but growth factors. Okay. And this one is the target cell. So, we need to elicit a uh, biological response in this target cell. So, this target cell has the binding receptors on its surface. Okay. So, these are the binding receptors on the surface of the target cell. These signaling molecules go and bind to this receptors. These are the signaling molecules are nothing but the growth factors and they go and bind to these receptors and then it regulates the signal transduction pathways. pathway thereby what it do is it regulates transcription of gene present in the nucleus ok. Say this is the nucleus and DNA it undergo transcription this is the activation of gene. So, this enhances the biological response. This is how the growth factors act. So, signaling molecules go and bind to the receptor present on the target cell, then they regulate the signal transduction pathway and they uh, uh, regulate the uh, gene uh, transcription then they elucidate the biological response. So, this producer cell has changed this uh, response of the target cell with the help of growth factor this is how it works and uh, so in nothing in general they are the secreted proteins that exert their effects by interacting with specific receptors on the cell surface as I said and through paracrine, paracrine is nothing but where they act on the neighboring cells uh, the signal uh, transfer uh, takes place in the neighboring cells. In autocrine as it uh, defines like it acts on itself in the same cell. Endocrine where it is transferred uh, in the blood and tissues and it transported through the blood and in the targeted site it will enhance its uh, property and uh, or elucidate its response. So, this is all about the growth factor signaling or the signaling molecules. And the, these are the this uh, table uh, shows the certain growth factors which are responsible in bone tissue engineering application. So, BMP2 which is bone morphogenetic protein 2 and bone morphogenetic protein 7 are FDA approved growth factors and they are used in commercially available products where they help in the differentiation and migration of osteoblast cells. Osteoblast cells helps in the formation of bone responsible for the formation of bone and H HGF which is hepatocyte growth factor where its function is proliferation, migration and differentiation of mesenchymal stem cells which are very important uh, cells. This mesenchymal stem cells it can uh, develop into n number of lineages not only the uh, bone it can also develop into cartilage, tendon or marrow uh, any kind of uh, 
lineages it can develop and IGF which is nothing but insulin like growth factor it uh, cell proliferation and inhibition of cell apoptosis apoptosis is nothing but cell death it inhibits that uh, IGF growth factor and PDGF uh, uh, which is platelet derived growth factor which are responsible for embryonic development proliferation migration and growth of endothelial cells so endothelial cells are important for uh, very much important for vascularization which helps in the formation of new tissue and tgf beta is nothing but uh, transforming growth factor helps in the pro uh, proliferation and differentiation of bone forming cells anti proliferative factors for epithelial cells and vegf vascular endothelial growth factor migration proliferation and survival of endothelial cells again it is for vascularization technique so these are the several uh, there are several growth fa uh, factors i just picked up the few uh, important growth factors in terms of bone tissue engineering application so the both uh, there are two distinct strategies for biomaterial uh, presentation of growth factors it can be uh, chemically immobilized uh, into the substrate like polymeric substrate or the matrix or physically encapsulation physical encapsulation can be done so there are two uh, mechanism on which growth factors are uh, uh, encapsulated into the matrix the first one is chemical immobilization where it involves chemical binding or affinity or interaction between the growth factor containing polymer substrate and a cell or a tissue and this will uh, produce a strong localized and uh, localized uh, interaction in that uh, uh, area however it is mainly based on the physical and chemical properties of the substrate as well as the growth factor dose and the physical encapsulation of growth factors in the delivery system it is achieved by uh, encapsulation diffusion and programmed release of growth factor from the uh, substrate into the surrounding tissue and uh, for this uh, a very good example where uh, uh, which we uh, saw in the last session is uh, video where uh, where uh, can you guess where the physical uh, encapsulation or the physical stimulus of growth factor is done in which mechanism yes ultrasound so through external stimuli we are delivering the growth factors so this is all about the growth factor uh, strategies and the what are growth factors and the two main strategies for growth factors and so to combine everything all the scaffold cells and growth factors and eye development of an ideal bone graft substitute so this picture clearly depicts the properties of the ideal bone graft substitutes first the first one there is the fractured bone there is a defect in the bone so first thought we need to uh, think what kind of base material we need to select either natural material it can be natural or synthetic polymer material but it should be mechanically stable angiogenic and it should support the cell uh, cell growth should be supported by the substitute material so the initial thinking should be about the matrix which is nothing but the scaffold so scaffold can be natural or synthetic but it should be non toxic mechanically stable and highly interconnected porosity then the osteoconduction so osteoconduction is nothing but the formation of new bone on the surface then the recruitment of mse cells emission chymal stem cells which then differentiated into precursor cells and then into osteoblast so that undergoes with osteo induction recruitment of mesenchymal stem cells differentiates into precursor cells and then osteoblast then the osteogenesis takes place osteogenesis is nothing but the formation of new tissue which is self which is which can be uh, done with the combination of growth factors which are nothing but bone morphogenetic proteins where it regulate recruits differentiate and regenerate mesenchymal stem cells so osteogenesis takes place and this bone is healed completely so any process it should have any ideal bone graft should have three major processes 
osseo integration first first it should be osseo integrative so it should have all the four properties osseo integration osseo conduction osseo induction and osteogenesis these all four important uh, process is needed to develop a bone to develop a bone graft to enhance and repair, uh, repair the uh, bone defect without any side defect and it can heal completely and it also accelerates the wound healing. So, uh, the next few slides I will be uh, talking about commercially available bone graft substitutes. Uh, the first one is uh, osteograph which is made up of ceramic material and these are FDA approved uh, uh, bone graft substitutes. Osteograph which is the name or the commercial product name and this it is made up of ceramic and major properties are osteoconductive limited osteo inductive when uh, mixed with bone marrow. It has to be mixed with bone marrow in order to become an osteo inductive material cells. Bone marrow has lot of mesenchymal stem cells and uh, they have used for bone void filler. The next product is Nova bone where it is bioactive glass. Bioactive glass is nothing but the silicates. So, it is osteo conductive limited osteo inductive when again mixed with bone marrow and filling uh, surgical and traumatic bone gaps. And the third one is osteosat where it is surgical grade calcium phosphate. Again it is osteo conductive and bioresorbable helps in hip and knee joint repair. The next one is calcium 6 where it is made up of calcium sulphate, osteoconductive and bioresorbable uh, pro it has properties again bone, uh, bone void filler and it provides strength. These all the ceramic and ceramic derived uh, uh, composites which are used for bone graft substitutes. As I said uh, in the first uh, session, uh, second session the uh, biomaterials where osteoinductive biomaterials ceramics plays a role as in, uh, in the uh, to be of uh, 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 to be uh, straight uh, uh, ceramic based materials are very much used in bone graft uh, substitutes because we also we already know that bone is a organic uh, bone is a composite material which is made up of inorganic hydroxyapatite again hydroxyapatite comes under ceramic family as well as the organic collagen matrix. So, uh, there are many works uh, based on ceramic based materials and uh, the next one is Norian where uh, it has been uh, prepared by monocalcium phosphate and uh, tricalcium phosphate and calcium carbonate. It gives very good compressive uh, strength uh, and uh, used in skull bone defect uh, and craniofacial uh, reconstruction and also it is an injectable paste format. And the third one is R tissue replacement where they have used polymethyl methacrylate which is a synthetic uh, uh, polymer and uh, so ceramic based now it is a synthetic polymer based uh, bone graft material and good strength durable and surface osteoconductive it is used for craniofacial uh, reconstruction. The next one again a ceramic based material alpha BSM which is made up of calcium phosphate cement and it shows good compressive strength. It is used in dental application for bone and cartilage defects. The next is Copio OS paste and which is made up of calcium phosphate and uh, uh, type 1 bovine collagen, natural and uh, synthetic composites uh, polymer and uh, it, uh, it provides significantly more calcium and phosphate ions at equilibrium than either uh, of uh, beta TCP or HA or uh, hydroxy appetite. It acts as the osteoconductive scaffold for the growth of new bone, osteoconductive scaffold. And the collagraph uh, which is the mixture of ticalcium phosphate, bovine collagen and hydroxy appetite. Again it is bioresorbable and osteoconductive. Um, it can be used for the treatment of long bone fracture and void filling. And the last two one is mainly based on uh, growth factors uh, 
which I already told like BMP2 and BMP7 are F FDA approved ones, best and OP1 putty and uh, BMP2 with along with collagen matrix and it is highly enhances uh, vascularization osteoconductive and helps in uh, healing of bone fracture and the next one OP1 putty which is again uh, BMP7 with collagen matrix osteoconductive and uh, bioreservable it helps in the uh, healing of bone defects. So, there are so many uh, bone graft material uh, uh, approved and they are still in progress. I have just picked up few bone graft materials mainly based on calcium and few on polymer and uh, polymer and uh, ceramic and few on natural and synthetic polymer and some uh, FDA approved uh, bone graft substitute based on growth factor. Uh, growth factor strategies and the cell uh, since the uh, first one is of uh, uh, fresh bone marrow cells since it is autologous uh, no need uh, for FDA approval and the current trends in uh, so that is all about the commercial uh, available uh, bone grafts and uh, few examples of commercially available products and now the current trends in bio uh, bone tissue engineering. So, currently people have uh, shown more interest in, pro, uh, in uh, developing mechanically strong porous scaffolds that can retain proper vascularization on OST integration. The major pitfall of bone tissue engineering is lack of sufficient and timely vascularization of the scaffold. For example, if you place a scaffold in the construct, see uh, the uh, there should be an immediate uh, acceptance of the construct uh, with the uh, host or the Vascularization should be uh, should happen deep into the construct. It should not stop at the upper layer of the construct. So it happens at many uh, stages, and there are many failures because of this kind of issues. So vascularization is a very important uh, uh, phenomenon or a strategy for an uh, successful ideal bone graft material. So uh, should uh, we should know about vascularization? So vascularization is nothing but the formation of new blood vessels. So, the greatest amount of new uh, bone formation occurs in the most vascularized area whereas inadequate vascularization at bone defect sites also associated with decreased bone tissue repair and regeneration. So, vascularization has been identified as the major pitfall for the successful uh, to, uh, bone tissue engineering graphs. So, uh, what people have done is to enhance vascularization, we have strategies proposed to develop uh, in, uh, to enhance vascularization thereby to increase the uh, success of the bone graft material. So, scientists have proposed several methods to accelerate onset of neovascularization which is nothing but the formation of new tissue for the survival and integration of bone uh, grafts with os tissue that includes scaffold design. First in uh, scaffold design itself they have changed many fabrication techniques where they have uh, started uh, doing 3D printing where we, uh, we have uh, uh, seen few examples of first generation of second generation scaffold biomimetic scaffolds which are nothing but 3D printed scaffolds done by fusion deposition uh, modeling and uh, inclusion of angiogenic growth factors for the enhancement of endoth endothelial uh, uh, cell. And uh, there are two techniques in vitro prevascularization and in vivo prevascularization. In vitro prevascularization is nothing but co culture of endothelial cells as uh, and osteogenic cells in, in vitro, and then we uh, uh, transfer into in vivo and check for the vascularization. In vivo prevascularization is nothing but two, uh, there are two modes where we place the scaffold uh, in vivo techniques where we place the scaffold in a uh, vascularized area subcutaneously or intramuscular region. After 2 weeks or after certain time we harvest that scaffold out and we place that scaffold in the bone defect. But this method requires 2 surgeries. So, first we need to place the scaffold to get it uh, vascularized. Then we have to remove that scaffold and place it on the defect side. So, it requires lot of pain, surgeries, time and everything. And the second method is like where we uh, have uh, vessels uh, which are responsible for uh, uh, jugular veins. For example, jugular veins we place inside this construct and we place in the in vivo. Whereas, the second method happens to be uh, kind of successful 
although but still it is very unclear which method is best for the uh, successful in vivo application and maybe the combination of all the methods may prove to be more effective for enhancement of vascularization. Then about vascularization. Now, uh, again uh, about immunomodulatory strategies is uh, becoming increasingly popular for modulating the OS foreign uh, response, body response that is fibrous tissue encapsulation. See, once the uh, construct has been placed, immediate reaction will be inflammatory response followed by the fibrous tissue encapsulation. So, we need to modulate that. So, incorporation of immunomodulatory uh, strategies, it is becoming popular to avoid that kind of encapsulation. And that is one of the current trend uh, where we uh, researchers is ongoing in bone tissue engineering. One is mainly on uh, uh, vascularization techniques and scaffold design and uh, in incorporation of immunomodulatory strategies. Then the main important uh, challenge or a critical challenge is the availability of animal models. Animal models pose another critical challenge to test various bio uh, bone tissue engineering graph approach preclinically. And preclinically, load bearing large animal models should generally be used to assess graph functionality, and this is one of the major pitfall where we face uh, in order to uh, check for the uh, bone graft uh, properties. So, uh, in future direction for bone tissue engineering to become a widespread clinical reality, it must incorporate the recent technologies that utilizes all the necessary components like scaffolds, cells and growth factors. So, we need to utilize all the new uh, recent technologies in order to develop a best scaffold, ideal scaffold and also with the cells, seeded with the cells and also for the growth factors for the successful bone repair and regeneration. And also some of the efforts must be made uh, to establish efficient intraoperative cell seeding methods as well to minimize in vitro culture of the uh, bone uh, tissue engineering constructs which allows bone tissue regeneration that allow bone tissue regeneration for uh, in in vivo studies. So, these are the few future directions uh, where we need to focus mainly on to develop the ideal bone uh, repair and regeneration. So, thank you. So, uh, overall picture where we studied about the uh, bone, its uh, basic functions and its anatomy of the bone and the modeling and remodeling of the bone and the tissue engineering strategies, scaffolds, growth factors, cells and the uh, commercially available products and the current trends and the future direction. Thank you.